Hello, I'm Gary Quinn, and welcome to another episode of Ready, Set, Live. My guest today is celebrity music photographer Nick Spanos. I'll be right back. Hi, Nick. Welcome to the show. Hey, Gary. Good to see you. Good to see you. You know, Nick, I followed your, your work, and it's quite uh, spectacular. Uh, you have shot some of uh, music's top icons. Uh, what, what, what was your inspiration? How did it all start photography? Well, actually, I never intended on being a photographer. My dream was to be a music video director. So after high school, I went to film school in Boston and moved to Los Angeles. And I dabbled in directing a little bit in the first few years. And um, then the I was working with a company. I, I was an office assistant at this music video production company. And they knew that I wanted to direct videos. So they did everything they could to encourage me to do that. And this was in the, uh, you know, early nineties. So back then in order to make music videos, you had to shoot on film. You needed a lot more money to do it. It, it wasn't like it is now where you could essentially shoot a video on your phone and edit it on your laptop. So during that time that I worked at that company, they would give me these small video projects to direct. And I did that and it was incredible. But soon after the owners of the company decided to move back to England, uh, which is where they were from, so the company closed and I found myself like not having the connections that I had. So I thought, what am I going to do? So I decided that I wanted to work at a record label, hopefully in the music video department, because I thought if I had to have a, a day job, it should be a job that benefited my dream in some way. Um, and eventually that did happen, but I never got into the video department. I got into the exact opposite <laughs> department. <laughs> I worked in uh, finance as a, the assistant to the VP of finance. So it was during those years that I worked there that got me into photography because I was not doing anything creative during the day and directing videos seemed very difficult at that time because I didn't have resources. So I thought I'm going to buy a camera and I'm going to take <laughs> pictures of all my friends and I'm going to just practice. And I thought, you know, this will hold me over until I can get back into directing. So that's how it started. I, I love I love when you you know when when an intention is set for one thing, but then the universe brings you other things to say, "Wow, Nick is really talented," and and it is an eye. You I mean even if you're video directing or a, a photography, uh, there's an eye that you have to have, and I know you have it, and you've shot you know Gwen Stefani, Usher. Um, and we can show some of the pictures because they're really brilliant. People can see uh, the look. I mean, this is um, Allie Brook, uh, Belinda, Carlisle, um, Usher. Um, who else is up there? Oh, Ariana, um, you know, uh, David Foster and Ariana, uh, Bocelli. Um, you've got uh, Bocelli and his son. Uh, you've got, uh, oh, uh, yes, uh, Chopra, uh, legend, you know, um, you know, uh, Robin Thicke, uh, Herb Alpert. Um, uh, who is this? I don't know who this person is. Uh, her name is Brenna Whitaker and, uh, David Foster signed her. Okay. Um, 
So this shoot happened when I was working with David on this other project. And she's an incredible talent. That's I love the way you did that. That's why I chose this picture, because I go, wow, <laughs> that is so cool, you know? Um, and did we have any more? We had, uh, I think we had one more. Oh, there's Donna, uh, my favorite. Um, and uh, um, what's his name? I'm sorry. Can't Smokey remember. Robinson. Smokey Robinson, exactly. But I love the way, oh, and I love the Gwen look. It's just always so, um, I don't know, you're able to capture these moments, which is an art. You know, that's why I was so taken by your work, uh, Nick, because um, it is a talent. And I think sometimes people don't think, you know, photographers are talented, but it's like a painter. You're like an artist, really. Um, Talk to me about this new project, your passion project. That was really um, interesting. I want to hear about this. Well, so last summer, I was not working because of the pandemic. And uh, I was thinking about goals that I wanted to achieve once I could start working again. Um, and what would feel fulfilling to me because I, you know while I, I mean i love what i do and i love all the people that i get to work with um but you know it still is a job and i thought well what what would be good for me that would be good for my soul and uh so i i, I decided that uh, i wanted to photograph the singers uh, who inspired me the most when I was a teenager. I grew up in a very small town in Vermont uh, in the 80s. And, you know, there was no internet. We didn't even have cable television until after I left to go to college. So music was everything to me. I mean, I was just obsessed with music. And, uh, you know, that's how I discovered photography that's how I discovered music videos once uh, MTV came on air. And I was always very drawn to it. And it's everything that I talked about with my friends. I mean, we would get together and just talk about music. <laughs> so, um, so I thought, you know, that if it weren't for those artists, I wouldn't have pursued this career. I mean, it was seeing those album covers and music videos and listening to the songs that really, I feel nurtured my creativity. So I made a list of artists who um, were important to me. And then I just started emailing. I, I would look for contact information on their websites or on social media and um, I started emailing people closer to the end of last year. And then I got responses, which I was, you know, I wasn't sure how that was gonna go. Uh, and uh, I got people to say yes. <laughs> so that was very exciting. And uh, I started shooting June 1st, actually. Um, so I've done, Okay, so let me back up a little bit. This project is like my own personal photo series and I'm calling it Music That Made Me. Mm -hmm. um, and my dream with this project is to make it into a book, coffee table book of photographs. But I've, I've sort of said to myself that I will think about making this into a book once I have photographed 50 musicians so it's kind of a hefty goal um, but it's been great so far now this sounds fantastic and i think that the intention is set and you know once you set an intention it begins the 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 domino effect so i'm sure it will be a coffee table bestseller so don't even worry i mean your work so. is, yeah. is is brilliant <laughs> So, you know, the, it speaks for itself. I mean, to go through a book with all these great photos, 
Uh, exactly, you know, like Greg Gorman, who I know, you know, you can just be just like Greg, you know, uh, why not, <laughs> you know? Well, Gary, I was lucky enough to work with some artists that, um, you know, are artists that I loved when I was a teenager already. Mm -hmm. I, I had photographed Belinda and I did a couple of music videos for Richard Marks and of course, Donna DeLore and Nikki Harris. Uh, so, you know, looking back at the, at those shoots, mm -hmm. I, I felt differently doing them. You know, I felt, I don't know, it felt on some level, it felt more satisfying and more fulfilling because I was working with artists who um, I, admire but they you know they really their art influenced my art let's just say mm -hmm. so um i just thought you know i this feels right it feels like the right kind of project for me to do and i i have told you know i mean i put it on instagram and i have told people about it and i always get such great reactions so i feel like people will hopefully want to see this and hopefully buy a book. But uh, if, if the book never happens, the process of doing this will be like super fulfilling. No, the to book me. is so, gonna happen. And, and you I'm have happy to, with that. You have to just be in, with the intent, the highest good, this book is gonna happen, Nick. Um, you know, I have heard about you for years from Donna DeLore. So uh, when, when the name came up, Nick Spanos, Nick Spanos, I go, and then when I saw the picture of Belinda that you did, and I had interviewed Belinda, I said, Nick Spanos. I had Nick Spanos on my mind. And so I said, I got to get a hold of him. I got to get a hold of him. I didn't even tell the girls I was going to do it. I just found your, your, you know, your Instagram and reached out. Um, but yeah, I really think you're headed for some great greatness. And, you know, it doesn't matter how you get there. It's just that you get there. Um, what do you, um, what does love mean to you, Nick? Well, first and foremost, it means, you know, my family and my friends and the people that surround me. Uh, but it also, it also means, you know, taking pictures and making videos. I just, that the creative things, the creative things that I do are so much a part of who I am and I, I need to be doing them. So I would say that I have a deep love for my work. Well, and also, I could work every yeah, day. And you, I, I know you're a passionate person. And if you have passion, you have purpose, you know, and, and I think it's important that people have passion because otherwise there's no creativity, no life. There's no life in their, in their, in their soul. And this life is about experiencing passion and excitement and, and inspiration. Um, does Nick have any fears? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way you said that. Oh, yes. Of course. <laughs> I, I, well, maybe fears and things that I worry about are the same thing, but yeah, I, I, constantly think about uh i constantly think about my work and uh you know i feel like it's always a hustle i don't think that you're ever like you, you should never be too comfortable and as an artist you have to keep growing and experimenting and trying new things so you know i sometimes worry about that like what does that look like in the future um you know my clients are usually record labels mm -hmm. and you all i always feel like you know you have to well not only do you have to stand out but you have to be current too so i i think about stuff like that a lot but then i also try i mean that doesn't hold me back, but I do think about it. Right. 
Well, I think also, you know, you have to, you, you talk about the hustle. I think it's just more about speaking for what, you know, what you want. You know, years ago, I interviewed an amazing woman, you know her, Shirley MacLaine. And at the end of the interview, she said to me, I said, what are you working on, Shirley? And she said, well, if you know any young directors, I'd like to do them. Uh, I can play grandmothers, you know. Uh, and I said, well, I do know some young ones. I'll pass on your name. So I was like, you know, here she was, an Academy Award winner. Yeah. You know, you have to. I, I was like, wow, I, yeah. I am like impressed with you, Shirley. Um, you know, I think you have to speak your word. And hey, I might know a, a young director who's looking for her that it becomes a huge success. Why not? Why not? Yeah, why not? Um, it's it's you, always a hustle. Absolutely. <laughs> and the other thing is, Gary's, you know, if people look at my website, they see recognizable faces. I think people have a, they, they come to a certain conclusion, you know, and while the work is sort of like the glamorous part of what we do, the day-to-day -day is a different story. I mean, it's a hustle. It's constantly emailing people to remind people that, you know, you're still around. Uh, and it's just constantly like trying new things too. Well, I love that in the composition of some of your other photographs with just, you know, regular people, it's really brilliant. It's, there's a, there's a artistry to it. I love the one picture. I, I don't remember the gentleman, but where he's he's bent down, uh, like like he's like he's um, he's he's like kneeling. Uh, I don't remember his name, but yeah, it's 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 art. It's art. Yeah, um, actually, I know that photo you're talking about. His name is Paul. He's a model. Correct. And um, you know, so this is a great example. I, whenever I have downtime there's a modeling agency that I work with. I call them and I say, who, who do you have that needs some new pictures? Because I have some ideas that I want to flush out. Mm -hmm. So they send me models to photograph and uh, it helps me because I have somebody to photograph and then they get pictures out of it. So that was one of those instances. So we just uh, basically experimented with lighting and poses and i loved that photo so that's that yeah no it was it was great and that's what i love about you that you have different not only well-known faces but you're doing it's artistry you know I, I bet you would do great um portraits of of kids children you know because you can read it on their face um i was Thanks. once when i work in japan i was walking to work one day and I see these four little schoolgirls. I mean, it was right out of a movie. And I said, they didn't speak a word of English. I don't speak Japanese. And I said, picture, picture. And I got my camera and I took a picture of the, f I, I said, I said, uh, I said, Hollywood, Hollywood. And they go, ha, ah, and they were so cute. It's like, I have it on my phone. It's just a sweet picture of four little girls. They must have been maybe, I don't know, four, five years old. Um, but that's what I think is so important about you're capturing a moment or an essence yeah. of a person, you know, which is great. And by the way, I loved the 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 video you did with Belinda and and uh, Donna. I loved the way yeah. you know that was it was the way it was shot and the the colors and the scheme. I mean, you have to do more of that too. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I um, I love music videos in a very different way from photography. Um, I, at this point, I don't really promote being a video director. I just naturally get some shoots uh, throughout the year and it's good. I mean, it's enough for me because videos are just a lot more work and uh, uh they can be much more stressful than photo shoots so i i make enough videos that i feel fulfilled um but i do try to focus more on photography but that video was with belinda and donna was such a that was such a dream day for me 
you know, I've worked with Donna for 14 years now and she's incredible. I mean, she's, I don't even know what else to say. She is such a pure talent and she's just great to work with. And her and I are on the same creative wavelength. And then of course I knew she was doing this song with Belinda and I love Belinda and have been a fan of hers since the Go-Go's. So to get the two of them together, uh, <laughs> was incredible i mean i still have to remind myself like that happened yes i actually bought the cd vinyl and that's your picture and yeah, actually yeah. belinda signed it for me um and um you know i, I was beautiful i mean it was a beautiful uh, you know that's why i just think you you just have to not be worried about anything uh, you're just going to shine and i know your work is great does anything make you uncomfortable um in a professional setting in life both well this makes me uncomfortable but it doesn't happen very much uh anything where I feel is things that feel to me uh, might be a little shady <laughs> or unethical or someone is treated poorly. I don't like that. And I don't like that around me. Thank goodness. I don't witness that very much. Um, and if, if it does happen with, someone who has hired me, I just kind of don't, uh, I don't have any involvement with them again. Right, absolutely. Um, how do you deal with pressure or any kind of stress? Do you meditate? Do you do any exercise that you love doing? What, what, what does Nick, how does Nick de-stress? Well, I find myself talking myself through situations a lot. You know, I, this job does come with a certain degree of stress, you know, because people are trusting you and giving their money to you to fulfill a vision. And sometimes that is a very a stressful situation to be in. And, you know, during shoots, especially music video shoots, um, things go wrong all the time. And I always joke, uh, the second you arrive on set, you are racing against time <laughs> to finish. Uh, so I do find myself feeling a lot of pressure and a lot of stress during video shoots. And I just try to talk myself through it, you know, because every single time I have felt like that, everything always worked out. You know, it always worked out fine. The product was great. I was happy with the results. The client was happy. So I just try to focus on experience, but I have to remind myself of that a lot because it's easy to get caught up in it while it's happening. Mm, absolutely. What do you know for sure in life so far? Well, I know that I have unconditional support and love for my family and my friends, uh, just in general, but definitely with my career. You know, my friends are always willing to drop everything and help me on a shoot. And I also know that creating truly makes me feel the most happiest. Mm, excellent. Answer these um, words. I believe. Uh, I believe in art. Heaven is. This is very obvious, but a place on earth. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> 
<laughs> exactly. If you know, you know, right? Good, good answer. <laughs> uh, my favorite thing to do on a Sunday is? Uh, go to a coffee shop. Okay. Um, so, so tell me, Nick, uh, for the future, what is, what is on the, you're going to finish the book, uh, the passion project. Uh, did you find during this lockdown, uh, year or year and a half or, uh, however long it was that there was something that, you know, that you will not be able to live without experiencing this lock lockdown year something that you say i will not go without this anymore well i mean it was a it was a new i mean it was a unusual year and a half for everybody but for me it was interesting because i i was no longer working i was no longer doing any shoots um and that was difficult. But at the same time, I used that time to, I still did creative things, but they were things that I wouldn't normally do. I mean, for example, I, I bought a drone um, and I started, you know, learning how to, to fly a drone and to shoot video and photos with it. It's something that I never thought about doing before, but I use that time to, you know, experiment with other things, you know? So for me, I can't do without making things and being creative. And I, since I couldn't do the things that I normally do, I just had to find other avenues. Mm. Yes, and I think a lot of people during the, the lockdown um, had to look at themselves and say, what do I not like about this picture or where I am in my life and really reboot or redirect the intent for the future, really? Well, Gary, I, I, think, it, I think I found a new sense of passion for my work, actually, because, you know, I was... I because I had so much downtime, I started watching a lot of YouTube, you know, uh, photographers and video creators and tutorials and kind of learning new lighting techniques. And I just did a lot of that. And I was so excited to be able to implement some of those things when I could do it. So by the time I, you know, got my first shoot, uh, you know, during all of this, I was so excited <laughs> to be doing it. And uh, it just, I just have a new appreciation for it. Like, because, you know, it was like taken away so quickly. So uh, yeah, I, I think it just gave me a lot of like excitement to, to start creating again. And also you probably used a lot of the new techniques on maybe some of your shoots. I know you shot Debbie Gibson recently and that backdrop, was that in the desert that was in Vegas or, or where was that? That was on uh, like an hour outside of uh, Las Vegas um, at this park called Valley of Fire. And yeah, we brought that, it was a piece of paneling and uh, I had an, I, I had this idea Mm -hmm. And I told her I wanted to do something like that, where we have this very simple backdrop, but it's within this grander landscape. And she loved it. So we slept that out there and we did it. And uh, it was one of my favorite photos from that day. Um, and yeah, that was actually one of the one of the ideas that I came up with during the lockdown. Um, so yeah, definitely I've been implementing these uh, things that I've learned. Have you found, Nick, that you know sometimes when you work with people closely in your artistic, they want to be your friends. Have you found that a lot of the record um, performers or music performers uh, view you as your friend now? Yeah, some, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's funny, 
uh, some of the artists that I have photographed for my project, I have become close with. Like, you know, I, I was on the phone with one of them a week ago. We were on the phone for like four hours. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm like, am I a teenager again? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Right. But it was just, it was just cool. You know, it is I mean, cool. It, cool. Yeah. I mean, I still have a client from years ago. I've just been a client for, oh my God, probably since I started doing this, this new work, uh, Nastasia Kinski. And, you know, uh, she became such a, you know, she was like a family. She would come to my house. She would bring me croissants in the morning. She would be on the phone with me. I just spoke to her. She's in living in Germany now. But, um, you know, there was this bond that you may not see someone, but they 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 connect with you and they don't want to let you go, you know, which I think is such a great thing about meeting people and knowing people, you know. Yeah, you can become, you know, kindred spirits when Correct. you when you work together, especially on something creative, I think, because, you know, it's, you're, as a, you know, someone who is an artist who's like in front of the camera, the, pe the people that I photograph, that's not always easy to do. You know, it's not easy to have your photo taken. I mean, it, it sounds, I mean, it is fun, don't get me wrong, but, you know, it's, you, you have to be vulnerable in front of the camera. And I think that really, makes you connect with the person who's asking that of you. And I try to make sure that my shoots are very um, low stress and fun and lighthearted. So I, I make sure that the crew that I have with me, if, if I have a crew, um, are people that are really just fun to hang out with. Mm. Well, you inspire me. Your work is inspirational, and that's why I reached out to you. So um, if Thank people you. would like to reach you, Nick, your uh, Instagram is Spanos Photo, or yes. they can go to your website and see your magnificent work at spanosphoto.com. And I can't wait to see this passion book. And anything I can do to support you, I think you're just brilliant. And um, I hope to meet you in, fu in the future uh, in person. But um, have a great rest of your trip there. And thank you so much for being on the show today. Thanks, Gary. Thank you for having me today. I'm Gary Quinn. Join me for another episode of Ready, Set, Live. Until next time, be well.